Hi, everybody, and welcome to Figma for EDU's monthly workshop. Today, we're going to be talking all about auto layout. This year, there have been a number of changes that have impacted the way that you can access auto layout. There's been some improvements on auto layout as well, so we're going to be talking about that. Many of the slides that you see here are also coming from Figma's auto layout UI3 playground. Those playgrounds are constructed by my team, the designer advocates. I had the honor of being able to work on this. So I'm going to be giving you uh, the best understanding of these slides, and we're going to work through some examples together. So first off, what is auto layout? For many of you, you've probably heard this concept. You may have worked with someone else who has created something using auto layout, and it seemed a bit mysterious to you as to why you might want to use it or how you're going to use it for your best practices. Now, what auto layout is, is a way to structure your design so it can either grow with the content as it grows. So if you think about a website, you know, uh, as you add in text, that footer is going to grow, right? Things are responsive to one another. So as an image grows, it might push down text. As an image shrinks, that text might move up. You know, as you add paragraphs of text, things need to be reflexive and move. You know, when you're localizing content into other languages, you need to consider how those language changes the size of that text impacts your design. So we're going to start here with just a simple example. I'm going to walk you through this example, and then we're going to start from square one. So uh, here, let me grab, I'm going to grab, I have this component in the document, and I'm just going to show you uh, uh, quickly like how this works. Actually, I'm just going to drop it over here. So this here is a component. This component is actually constructed using auto layout itself. So in, when I hop over here, there is a panel and you'll see that uh, as I, I expand and as I grow this component, right, the content kind of flows with it. You'll see that image area get larger. You'll see that this text is also impacted. And so also we need to consider that when you have a additional elements. If you consider a feed in your phone, you're working on a phone design and you want to consider how these things are working. So if you have, you know, one object, you have another object. I'm just going to color these so you can see them here. I'm going to have a third object. So when you have these objects, sometimes when you need to move them around, it can be really cumbersome. You're like, okay, I got to move this up. I got to move this down. When you have auto layout, what it's going to do, it's going to construct a frame that is going to keep the ordering of these objects as well as the spacing between them. So if I were to take these three objects and if I have them unstructured, I can select them and I'm going to enable auto layout. So you'll see this panel over here on the right. I'm going to hit plus and you'll see that they kind of get arranged. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to have this over here. I'm going to select them. And now I'm going to press shift A and you'll see that they're now kind of arranged and that might not be arranged the way that I want. So I might have to make an adjustment. I'm going to set their direction and I can set their spacing and I can even reduce this here. So what you'll see is that these objects now retain, right, the spacing in between them. So this auto layout frame keeps them organized together. And then if I want to move one above the other, right, I can move this up. If I want to take this card and expand its height, it moves the other ones down. So when you're thinking about auto layout, you're thinking about content design and the way that the layout responds to that content. So I was just asked, will this cover advanced auto layout? We're gonna start off a little slow and then ramp up pretty quickly. So uh, first things first, enabling auto layout frames. The shortcut key is shift A. You probably have seen, you know, some TikToks out there of influencers being like whack shift A, right? Shift A is going to be the shortcut. And what it does is it takes the elements that you currently have selected. So if I have, right, one, two, 
three objects selected, I select them and I press shift A. What that does is it then encases them into an auto layout frame. If you look over here on the left, you'll see this frame it has a very long name. Let's, let's rename that. We'll call this three boxes. So here we have our three boxes frame and all of those objects are now abiding by the rules of that frame. And what are those rules? Over here in the auto layout panel, and I'll show you a quick trick. If your auto layout panel, you don't see the little names here. So you see resizing, direction and gap alignment. If you don't see that, go ahead, click this little option. And there is this choice called property labels. When I turn it off, this is the more advanced mode where we don't rely on those labels to, to save some space. But if you're just learning, click right over here in the view options and choose property labels. And you will see labels that will help you understand these properties that are gonna impact your auto layout frame. And the first one you'll just see here, a simple one, we'll cover it in more detail later, is this direction. So you can see that I can choose for these three boxes, either to move in a vertical format or a horizontal format. Now I can break the auto layout. Um, I'm gonna show you a quick one, I'm just gonna hit Command Shift G, I'll show you the shortcut in just a bit, but I can break the auto layout frame and then I just have those individual objects and they're no longer constrained uh, by that relationship. So all auto layout is, is a frame that has a new set of rules that arranges the objects that are inside of it. And the purpose is to allow you to expand and contract that. Now with UI3 and with the recent launches at config, we have a new feature called suggest auto layout. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. The new shortcut key for this is shift control A. If you're on windows, it's control alt shift A. There's also a way to access it um, on the canvas in a right click menu, but suggest auto layout is going to let things work a little bit differently. So once again, we have auto layout where I can take a single object, a, a, a row or a column, um, or even if I wanted multiple rows of an object, I have these three objects here. Let's pick a color that I have there. I can select these three objects. I can press shift A. It'll arrange them vertically. I can arrange them horizontally, right? And I can adjust them. There's gonna be certain rules that govern how they respond. Now suggest auto layout. This is gonna be new wherein I can actually take multiple, a more complex layout. So I can have one object here, right? I'm gonna have one, let's say two, three objects there. And then let's say I'm going to have one, two, three objects there. And I'll show you the shortcut key for this is shift control A. But if you're not too into shortcut keys, it's okay. You can right click, come down here, more layout options and suggest auto layout. Now what suggest auto layout does is it creates nested auto layout frames. So you can see that I now have a more complex layout. So this is gonna be one of the newer features. Suggest so auto layout is gonna take a look at what you're trying to accomplish and it will produce a more sort of responsive approach to generating it for you. So if I take a look over here, suggest auto layout, we have one frame, we have two frame, we have three frame, and it's nesting those different rows and columns. And we'll dig into that in just a bit. So now removing auto layout. Now, many of you, you might be working on something and you might need to remove auto layout. You want to break it apart. So then this way you can access those individual elements. Sometimes you might be working with someone else and you need to dissect something and you're just like, okay, I need to take a step back. Uh, I need to reconstruct this for myself. I'm going to show you how to do that. I see here we have a question. Can we see how to use auto layout to easily switch between desktop and mobile tablet? That's a longer question. We'll get that in a bit. Uh, how can we create the boxes? The boxes are being created by pressing the R key. So I'm going to draw this R key here. I'm going to press R key to draw a rectangle. And you'll see that this is just a rectangle. I'm starting off with simple rectangles, um, but this might swap out for a text box. It might swap out for an image. It might swap out for a component at a later point in time. But for now, I'm just using these simple rectangles using the R key to show you some of the concepts. 
So for breaking and removing auto layout frames, so I just bring these frames over. You'll see that this is an auto layout frame. I'm going to call it three boxes. And uh, this one, I'm going to call this wireframe layout. And now, so for these three boxes, they're in the frame. You know, I'm trying to, uh, uh, let's say I'm adding something to it. You know, I just added this rectangle. And let's say the behavior of that auto layout frame is kind of causing me a bit of distress. And I'm just like, okay, I just need to break this out. Um, what I can do is I can press uh, Option Shift A or Alt Shift A. Another way to just destroy it entirely is to press Command Shift G. That'll break it out and keep those elements there. So once again, it's just a frame that's organizing its contents. So in here in three boxes, you'll see the boxes that are inside of it. So when I remove auto layout, I can also just right click and say remove auto layout. Now with suggest auto layout, right? And this is the more advanced concept where we actually have, you know, um, all of these auto layout frames within auto layout frames, right? So one, two, we have all these frames. Let's say we want to break them all apart. So we have a much more complex layout. Let's say another designer gave you this complex layout, but you need to break out those elements and sort of digging in and removing one by one is just proving to be cumbersome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose uh, more layout options, remove all auto layout. Right. So the things that we're covering in these two frames are basically creating an auto layout frame and removing an auto layout frame. And in a moment, we'll start to get into the options that you can use to have more intention when generating your auto layout frames or editing them and knowing how best to work with them. So once again, the way that suggest auto layout works is it'll look at something that is a bit more complex. It's a good way to maybe kick off a design. It may require that you apply some editing with its properties, but I think it's a great way to start to see how you might begin to structure something using auto layout, wherein let's say you have something that is complex like this component here. And you'll see that what we're actually looking at is, you know, several elements that have nested auto layout. So within this frame here, you'll see that I have one, two, three icons on the left. I have an icon on the right. I have this on the bottom. So when you have a more complex layout, you're thinking about being intentional of the arrangement of those objects. So so I see someone says that uh, control click does not bring any options when selecting the shapes. You need to have the correct selection, right? Like, so here, um, if I don't have this in an auto layout frame, I'm not going to see those options, right? So you'll notice when I select those options, if I right click, I can add auto layout to them. Right, and then here is the suggest auto layout. So um, control clicking, if you're not seeing the, the right click option, but it's essentially the context menu that's gonna give you the ability to access these properties. Um, is there a way to, yes, we're gonna be talking about these concepts, so I'm not gonna get ahead of myself yet. All right, so um, I also see here that uh, Corey West from SCAD is in the chat. I just wanna give Corey West, a shout out, as well as uh, Santos Torres. So uh, what's up? How's it going? Glad that you can make it. All right. So once again, let's talk about suggest auto layout. And once it, and I am just going to start simply with just some of these rectangles. So here, you know, I have this object. I'm going to have two, and then I'm going to have, you know, some smaller objects here. One, two, three, four. Right? We want to think about what we're beginning to do here. And what I would recommend is just see how it's working for you. So you'll see that it recognizes that these three shapes have a relationship. It sees this object as being kind of on its own. So I'm going to color that one a slightly different color. And then these two here are kind of on its own. And it's going to try to do its best to accomplish what it thinks you're trying to do. And so you'll notice that there's other options here such as resizing 
uh, spacing and padding and alignment. And we're going to be talking about those concepts so you can have much more control over what it is that you are trying to make. And just like I have this component here, it's kind of like my prime example. As we're working through, we're going to take a look at this. You know, this has very specific properties that dictate that when I expand this, that this image grows, that when I expand this wide, that my text field grows, right? Notice how these elements are staying to the left and this element is staying to the right. You know, that's how that works. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and drop Alex's photo in there just for fun. There we go. There's Alex. So you can see as I'm scaling it up, as I'm shrinking it down, right, it's impacting that content. And in order to have control over these properties, right, you need to start thinking about your intention for making that component. All right. So, um, very quickly, the button example is kind of the classic example with uh, uh, Figma to demonstrate auto layout and understand how it can work out best. So if you've never made one before, if you're looking to be intentional about one, creating a simple button. So this example, once again, if you're following along, we created this community file. You can see where I am here. This example has the step-by-step -step for, for working on this. So you'll see that we're starting with a frame and some text. And when I press shift A, you'll notice that that frame uh, uh, assumes what you're trying to do. And so that, now when I type in text, it grows. Um, so here too, when uh, you'll see if I, if I type in text here, it grows and it expands, right? And that's because the outer frame, what it's doing is it's, changing its height and width depending on the contents, depending on the child object that we're working with here. Um, and so let's walk through that. You can start by pressing the T key, the T keys down here. You could put in some text so I can say, hello world. If I want to, I can make this text larger for the purposes of this live stream. I'm going to come over to the typography panel and make this larger. So I'm just going to make this like 96 point text. So this is just a text field. If we take a look on the left in the layers panel, we see that text field, hello world. Now, when we press shift A, Basically what happens is it takes that text layer and it wraps it inside of a new frame. So you'll see now that my text layer is inside of that frame and we can rename that frame and call this, you know, our hello button. I'm renaming it by double clicking and typing that in there. And when we look at this, now that this is a frame, we can control frame properties, right? So the frame properties of this, when I select this frame, you will see over here on the right, there are fill and stroke properties. So the way that the button has a background is that that's an auto layout frame with a fill. So I'm going to add a fill and that's going to make a white background. Let's go ahead. Just so y'all could see it in, in the back, I'm going to make it a, a stark green, for example. Now, um, sure, I can repeat how I converted it to a frame. Let's go ahead and let's break it and let's walk through that one more time. Here's my text field. I press shift A or you can come over here. Um, actually, you're not going to have that option yet. You're going to press shift A and that's going to make it into an auto layout frame. When you make it an auto layout frame, you will see the auto layout properties over here on the right sort of be impacted by it. So now this is a frame and inside is this text. This frame is currently set to hug resizing. So if you take a look at my window over here, I can see the width and the height of it. And I can see the resizing option of that frame. The frame is hugging the contents. So as those contents get larger, it impacts the size of the frame. The easiest way to see that is to select the frame, to say, hello button. We're going to select the frame. We're going to come down here. We're going to add a fill. I'm going to add that like green fill. There we go. What is that? That brat chartreuse. And we're when we edit that text inside of the frame, you see that the outer frame grows. However, there's other properties as well that we're going to talk about, such as if we look down here, there's going to be padding. 
this padding right now it's set to a value of 10. I can change that padding by increasing it. So there's my horizontal padding. There's my vertical padding. Now, these are things that can also be adjusted on the canvas. When I go onto the canvas, I can adjust my horizontal padding and I can adjust my vertical padding, right? So there we go. There we go. I can adjust the padding on that object and you will see that reflected in the properties panel on the right. So when I click on this little option, I can control all of the individual padding surrounding that object. Now, so once you select the auto layout frame, you will see the padding show up underneath it. Um, so uh, now another thing to look at is let's say that we select these buttons here, right? We have a, a group of them and we press shift A, right? Now we have buttons that are auto layout frames arranged by another auto layout frame. So we have button one, button two, button three, four, and five, and they're actually in a wrap frame. So the wrap frame allows me to move this up and down. You'll notice that the three options are going to be vertical, horizontal, and wrap. We're going to talk about that in a later section. So if I was to work with something like this, let's make this look more like a button by selecting the frame coming over to the right and giving it some border radius. There we go. That's the good stuff. Let's give it a stroke. Let's make that stroke a little bit thicker. And there it is. So when you have an arrangement of these, let's say one, two of these, and I, uh, let's add a, uh, yeah, let's just leave the two. Um, so you'll see on the left pane here, we have an auto layout, we have an auto layout button and we can nest them, right? And this is what suggests auto layout does is it will create all of the arrangements. Um, so we're gonna nest these manually by pressing shift A. And so now we have our navigation, navigation. So in the same way that you might construct a web page using HTML, where you nest elements, you nest like button elements inside of a list or button elements inside of a div container, you're going to think of these auto layout elements as those same containers. And as such, when I type in my text, you'll see that the other button uh, moves down the line. It gives me room. If it weren't for that, so if I was to say button one, right, and button two, if they weren't wrapped inside of this navigation frame that is auto layout and they themselves not have auto layout, right, it'd be much more cumbersome to work. So if I was to come down here, right click, and uh, let's remove all auto layout, you know, when I edit this button, right, it's going to be so much more difficult. Like every time I adjust the button size, I would need to then move this over, right? I need to move this over and I need to move this over, right? So without auto layout, you know, you're doing a lot of extra work that you don't necessarily have to. So, you know, I could say home and like about me. Um, I can make those adjustments and it will keep that relationship. It'll always keep the spacing between them and maintain the padding around them. Um, so yes, auto layout frames can be set as components. So yes, all I would need to do, we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. Um, so if I were to take this frame and make this as a component and go to my local assets, when I bring this out, the auto layout is set on the component. So you can see that as I type, right, I could have as many of these as I want. So one of the prime functions of components is to use auto layout and allow you to uh, work, you know, more intentionally, like focus about the things you really want to care about instead of moving things around uh, needlessly. All right. So, um, so right now uh, there are some hacks, but uh, you know, aspect ratio isn't currently maintained in auto layout, but I would just keep your eyes posted because uh, it's a highly requested feature. 
So uh, once again, I'm just going to show you uh, uh, Suggest Auto Layout. So I think that Suggest Auto Layout is a really cool innovation. Uh, and I want to just highlight the three differences. So if I were making a little card here, right? So this card, you know, I want this content to grow and expand as I increase this width. You know, I want this text, you know, to wrap around and grow as I type text in there. These are behaviors that I want to think about this card to make it um, more useful. Um, do, 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 do. So I, uh, um, so what we're going to do here is just kind of see what this looks like. So without auto layout, right? Um, it's just inside of a frame. Right. There's not really that much you can do to grow the text automatically. Now with apply single auto layout, right, you'll see that this is pretty complex. In order for me to work on this, if I was to apply single auto layout with shift A, right, you'll see that what it's trying to do is wrap everything inside. Right. It's not giving me the output that I desired. So what I would need to do is I would need to go in and manually press auto layout for each one of these objects. Right. So this one, this one. So this is auto layout. This is auto layout. This is auto layout. Right. That can be very cumbersome and time consuming where, you know, OK, this is starting to work, but it's not quite there yet. Um, suggest auto layout right? I can go in here. You'll see that this right now is the same frame as those other ones. If I right click more layout options, suggest auto layout, shortcut key for that being uh, control shift A, right? So let's do control shift A. When it applies, it says four new layout frames created. When I go over here to my file, each of those new layout frames created will have a little dot that shows me that it was created by Suggest Auto Layout. And then let's say if I want to uh, rename these frames that were given to me, um, because if we have um, UI3, you're gonna have this new feature down here that is gonna be rename layers. Uh, so when I choose rename layers, we can see that we now have a container, song info, song title, music icon, divider, right? It just made that work for us. So. Um, now, if I go to this card, you'll see that it's growing the way that I want. And as I type in text, right, the text grows and this object here is aligned to the center. I'll show you that one more time, but feel free to try this out in the test file. So I'm going to bring it down to this area. Here we go. We have this card. We take a look at this card. It's just a frame. We have a few icons. We have some dividers, right? Things are just kind of placed inside of this frame. So when I go here, you'll see this normal frame, right? Things are just moved around. Now it's intent. It's important that you try to uh, be as intentional with you can't with you can about aligning objects where you want them to be aligned. And so I'm going to go here to card, right? So watch the layers over here on the left. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose more layout options and I'm going to choose suggest auto layout. And what that does is it creates all of these new layout frames. So let's, let's move, let's move this window to be a little bit wider so we can take a look at that. So card, art, album, placeholder, all of these frames. So now I'm going to select that card. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose in the search, I'm going to type in rename layers, right? It's part of the AI beta. And once again, if this is a Figma for Education live stream, right? We support the education professional plan. If you're on the education professional plan, you're verified for EDU, um, all EDU accounts now have UI3 with the option to go back to UI2 if you wish. But if I type in rename layers, right? You'll see in real time, um, my layers uh, get renamed. So card details, title with icon, title, right? We have our dividers, artist with icon, artist name, artist icon. It's going to go through and name things uh, a little bit better for us. So yes, it is also available in the desktop app. All right. So let's see. Now we're going to talk more about some of those details and controlling auto layout. Now that you have a sense of what it does, right? It allows you to work with elements in your designs that can grow to fit content. Um, and there's going to be two ways. You're, the text, the content's either going to um, grow to fit 
contract to fit or the content inside responds to the outside frame. So the way to think about auto layout, there's two ways to think about it. Either the frame is responding to its children or the children are responding to the frame. And all of that is basically what you control as a designer. So these are the main things that you're gonna think about. When you look at the icons on the left, you're gonna see horizontal auto layout, right? Let's see, I think they changed those icons on me recently too. But you'll see horizontal auto layout, like as objects across, vertical auto layout, they're gonna be vertically set and wrapped auto layout. That's when you're doing something like a, um, um, like a, uh, uh, you know, those individual things. So someone asked, I have an EDU account and uh, um, let's see, you get AI. If you have an EDU account, create an education team. Uh, there's a good chance that you verified for education and you are just on a starter team. So make sure you create an education team. We have a um, YouTube video out there that says getting started with Figma for education and it walks through the steps. Uh, so many people that I uh, encounter, um, I would say only 15% of verified EDU users actually create an education team and just work on starter teams. And that's why you're not having access to the, to the features. All right, so uh, here, uh, the different types of layout that you have, horizontal auto layout, vertical, wrapped, you're gonna see that in the icon here. Um, the things that you're gonna notice over here on the right, when you're working uh, with auto layout, let's see, uh, uh, I'll just show you. So if I have an object, let's do just something very simple. Let's create these three rectangles. I'm gonna put them into an auto layout, right? The options that you have over here, um, the resizing is going to impact how the auto layout responds. So once again, it's either the, the frame is responding and growing to the children or the children are growing and responding to the frame, right? It's one or the other. Um, so those are going to be set here and it's, they've actually updated it recently. Um, so auto layout, direction, padding, and alignment. So direction is basically you know, I'm controlling which direction it's going. Uh, wrap is unique in that it'll allow the row to wrap around. So if you're thinking about this resizing and those elements maintaining their space, right? That's what's gonna be supported by wrap. Uh, direction, I'm sorry, the um, gap right here, that's gonna be the spacing that you have in between those elements. So that's controlling how much space they have. Now that could either go be a positive or negative value. And then we are also gonna have that padding. So you'll see that these objects are here. Every frame has the ability to create a background and the background will help you see the padding that's being applied to the frame. So when I apply that, you'll see these padding values, I'm able to increase them. And that gives me the padding around the element. What this is in reference to is the uh, box model. So if I click on over and take a look at dev mode, um, you can see the way that this is going to be uh, surfaced to a developer. When you're working with a developer, right, the padding values, the spacing values, those all help the developer understand the way that this content is going to flow. So auto layout is going to map to concepts of web design, such as Flexbox. Um, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. So someone was wondering what page I'm on. I'm currently on the auto layout settings and control page. If you zoom out, you could see that we're in the third row right here. Um, so you can adjust auto layout on the canvas. We've already been doing that. When I take a look at these elements here, when I hover over the, the gap spacing, when I hover over you know, the uh, padding, these are all values that can be changed. You can also just click on them and type the value in. Um, so I could say 48. Uh, so a lot of people prefer to work on the canvas. You'll notice that these elements are currently, you know, aligned here to the left with that wrap. That alignment, we're going to talk about in just a moment. You'll see this little, you know, alignment cracker that we call it. It looks like a little saltine. Um, I could adjust the alignment of objects within it. So if I have more height, you can easily see that I can control how these objects work. 
And if you start to add more objects, that's going to be a great thing about this. I'm going to press Command D, uh, Control D if you're on Windows. That's duplicate. As I duplicate in more elements, right, they kind of come in here and, and I'm able to control with these settings, right, how they show up, right? So right now when I click on that sensor, aligned sensor, they're going to be in the sensor and aligned in that way. Um, so nesting into auto layout frames, right? When, when you're, when you're placing stuff into it, let's say you have, uh, you're going to introduce a, a new element into your auto layout as you begin working, right? I'm going to drop this in here. I can see the placement of it. And if you take a look at my layers panel on the bottom left, you can see that where those elements are going to be placed. So when I drop that circle in here, right, it's going to be placed in there. When I move it around, it's kind of letting me know where it's going to go and where it's going to fit. So uh, here, I can change this frame to be hug contents and hug contents. This will give you a better sense of it. So now when I'm adding this in, you'll see that the frame will grow to fill and I can move it around and we'll get a nice little animation to see where this is going to belong. This little animation um, is, is new uh, with the recent update of auto layout. So if you haven't seen it before, you know, this will give you a much better sense of where something's going to get placed. And this is going to be a concept we're going to talk a little bit later. If you're on Windows and you hold S or if you're on a Mac and you hold the control key. So you'll see this little option come down and I'm dragging over. Uh, if I hold the control key, I'm going to get a different option. So the control key on Mac or the S key on Windows, it's going to let me place this object wherever I want. I'm going to put it up here in the top left, right? Um, so otherwise it'll go into the flow or if all the control key, it'll go in there, right? Still part of the frame, it's still nested. It's still in there. It just has an absolute position within the frame. And once again, that'll be a, to a topic we're going to talk about in just a little bit. So we're going to dig into uh, direction, alignment, padding, and spacing. Um, Alex, were there any questions that, that I should address real quick before moving on to the next session? I would keep going. We have a few questions, but a lot of them are probably going to be covered in our next prototyping session, or you might cover in the next section. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, I noticed a lot of questions are just, you know, things that we're about to cover anyways. So that that's great. Direction helps you understand um, basically like the behavior. So either objects are going to go in a row or they're going to go left to right, um, or they're going to be vertical right? Um, you can wrap. And I see somebody just asked a question like uh, auto layout to make prototype more interesting. Uh, you absolutely can. Prototyping with smart animate will acknowledge auto layout and give you the ability to do some really cool things. Uh, we, we might not get to that today, but I would highly encourage you to try that out. You can basically animate padding and spacing uh, with smart animate and prototyping, and that will give you a lot of really cool uh, opportunities. So here, once again, when thinking about auto layout, if I was to, let's say, let's use polygons. We've been using a lot of rectangles. I'm going to draw a little polygon here. Let's get a little triangle going. So I have one, two, three. Uh, let's make this one like a little hexagon. And let's make this one. Uh, what is that? Uh, there we go. A heptagon. One, two, three. Is that seven sides? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah, that's a heptagon. Okay, so we have these three objects. I'm going to select them. I'm going to press Shift A. So once again, the direction, if we make them vertical, right? They go in a vertical direction. I can select one and I can move up and down with the arrow keys on my keyboard. So uh, I can move those up and down at any point in time. I, if I wish, I can make that horizontal um, or I can make it a wrapped element. When it's wrapped, that means that the... Uh, main frame, the container frame, um, is a little bit different in that it allows me to uh, control its width and that width will impact the objects that are inside of it, right? So that's going to be direction. So you have those three options, so horizontal, vertical, or a row wrapped layout. 
Alignment, we started touching on um, alignment matters in how your objects are going to grow. Are they going to grow from the left? Are they going to go from the bottom? Are they going to grow from the right? So if I have here a circle, let's see if I have a circle and then I'm going to have some text. So let's say, hello world. I'm going to create some text there. Let's say we're creating like a, uh, like a little like avatar here right? I can select them both. The thing that I will note on my text field is you need to be aware of the, the text field alignment as well, right? And you also need to be aware of the uh, text, uh, whether it's auto width, auto height, or a fixed size. My text currently is auto width, and that means that it'll just kind of grow to fill. So this is going to be the way that it behaves with the button. We can select both of those objects, press shift A, puts it into an auto layout frame. We can call this like uh, avatar title. And now that it is in this frame, we can give it a fill. We can select that and give it some padding. One fun fact or a pro tip, if you want to change all your padding at once, if you're on Windows, hit Control. If you're on Mac, hit Command and click on that window. You'll see that it changes to uh, give you a full window width, right? So that's a full window width right there. And uh, so when you can click in, I could type in 80 and it'll impact all of the the, the, the fields at once. So command click in there, it'll select all the fields and I can put in a very specific value. Now let's just round out those corners. And so um, here, what we're talking about once again is this concept of alignment. So if I were to expand this width, right? Now we have a, a fixed width resizing behavior on this panel and this alignment panel becomes much more important because we can align this content from the right and that means it grows from the right right so i'm typing in and it grows from the right i'm hitting undo now i can say all right click on the left and now it grows from the left if i were to take control over the height of this component now we can determine where does the alignment grow from does it grow from the bottom right. So I can type in text and you can see that it is growing from the bottom right there. All right. So that alignment, these are all things that as a designer, if you're building out a component, you need to be intentional about the ways that you want it to grow and flow. And likewise, if you have multiple objects you know, and you put them inside of an auto layout, you know, it's important to think about how this might grow and impact those other elements. So as I'm typing in here, oops, there we go. As I'm typing in here, it has a fixed width. So I'm pressing the return key to make this larger. It's going to grow to fill that space. And that's how the, the alignment is, is going to, going to be working. So thinking about bottom left, center, right, top, right is going to impact how you are trying to render that intent out. We've already covered padding extensively. So just thinking about the spacing around the elements and considering that the padding is an important concept that is gonna be delivered to the folks developing what it is that you're working on. So if you're building out a, a little component, um, if you head on over to uh, dev mode, you will actually see the representation of the box model in how it will be developed with CSS. So here I can see display flex. I could see the intentional width. I can see the padding that's being applied, um, that the items are being aligned to the center. And there's that gap of 46. So those properties, as you make adjustments here, right, when I go into this mode, it will impact them. Um, and for funsies, you know, if you're a designer and you want to begin to measure these out, you can like measure out the important bits using the annotation tool. And so if I was to make like little changes here and like identify to like the developer, you know, like what's going on here with like the padding, right? I can start to easily redline that. And if you make any changes you know, like in your design. So if I increase that padding and I go back into dev mode, 
those values are now updated, right? So I can go back over here. I can reduce the padding, the top padding on there. And now when I go into dev mode, I can see that I've, I've changed that. I've altered that. So when you're working with auto layout, you're actually making your layout more conducive for web development. So these concepts may be new to you, but they're going to map a little bit better to code for that developer. So when you're thinking about applying that padding and that intent, you know, once again, I can go in here, I could draw in like a little like annotation and say, you know, oh, okay, like let's impact this. Now to make this a little better, I'm going to select this text field I'm just going to change its resizing. This is going to be a con concept we're going to get to soon. We might go a few minutes over, but fill container will allow uh, this text to wrap inside of that component. And you'll see that when we go into uh, dev mode here, I can uh, be a little more intentional about how this value uh, is surfaced to the developer, right? Um, so here we've already talked extensively about gap. Auto spacing is one that we haven't quite yet tackled. Uh, auto spacing allows you to um, apply even spacing across the elements that are inside of your auto layout frame. So if I select these three objects, I'll press shift A and I come over here to this alignment, um, I can select and press X. Right. So if I press X in here, right, you'll see that those objects, the spacing in between them will grow. Right. It's also uh, accomplished by typing in auto into this field. So if I want explicit spacing, I type in 42. Otherwise, I can come to this drop down. I can do auto. And what that means is those elements are going to uh, uh, not grow to fit the container, but the spacing in between them will, right? So the spacing in between them will, right? And then once again, as I add new elements, command D, command D, command D, right? Like those elements, that spacing, because it's auto, though that, that spacing kind of then decreases. Uh, we've kind of talked about this briefly, but canvas stacking. So if I have like, you know, one element, I have two elements. I have, uh, let's say a third element that is green. And these are, oops, these are in an auto layout. When I press shift A, I can reduce the space, but let's say I want to alter how they stack. Let's say I want the red one on top. I can select this frame. Let's say, let's make the red on top. I can select that frame, come over here. There are auto layout settings and you'll see this canvas stacked setting that allows me to choose the first B on top, right? So we got the last on top and now it's going to be the first on top. So that's going to be a setting. A lot of people will miss this, but that will give you the opportunity to change the stacking. Uh, can you make the middle one on top? Uh, not necessarily because there can be infinite middle ones. Um, so right now the, the Z index spacing doesn't necessarily count. However, if you want to have something that sits on top of the rest, you can create absolute position elements that ignore the flow of those. So this circle right here, I could drop it in there, right? See how it's part of it. But if I want it to be in the front and center on top of everything, I can hold the control key. I could drag it in. Now you'll see it is an absolute positioned element. You'll notice it over here in the top right on the design panel as well. This ignores the auto layout and lets it live inside of here. So even as I add more elements, it's always going to be on top. So if you wanted an object to sit on top of your auto layout, now all you need to do is consider how you want it to align. If I come over here, and I choose center align, it will give me a center aligned constraint. The constraints panel basically tells an object how to align inside of a frame. So we're gonna choose a center constraint. And that means that as I have 
more elements, it's always going to be in the center of the frame. Let's say I apply a top right constraint. So let's choose right and top. Now, as we add this, right, it's always going to be on the top and the right. Let's move this down here and we can choose top and uh, let's see, right and bottom. And now as this grows, it's always going to be in the bottom. So that's going to be absolute positioning. You'll see those a little bit lower. Um, do have a little bit more to cover here, but basically the thing, the, la the last two concepts I want to leave you with are the notions of resizing as well as setting minimum and maximum values. So when we talk about resizing, we have to think about whether the canvas or the, sorry, the frame is impacting its internal elements or the internal elements are impacting the frame. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I have, let's say, the, I'm going to make a UI card. So let's say I create the space for an image. I draw it a rectangle. I come over here to the fill. I choose placeholder image, right? We got our placeholder image. Let's give that um, like a small stroke just so we can kind of see its outlines a little bit better. And I'm gonna round out the corner radius. Next, I'm gonna draw a text field by pressing the T key and drawing out a text field. And I'm gonna say, you know, hello, world. Why? Because I can't think of anything else to say at the moment. So when I select that, I can increase the type size. And we're going to think about the relationship here of these two objects. We're going to make this a very simple UI card. Um, I'm going to select them both. I'm going to press shift A and auto layout has been added. And now I'm going to pay attention to these properties that we've been learning, right? The resizing properties, direction gap, the resizing properties are going to be the ones that we're going to pay attention to. So we're thinking about the frame. So we're going to call this UI card. That frame is going to have the fill background. That frame, we're going to give it some padding. I'm going to hit the command key on Windows, control key. If, I'm sorry, command key on Mac, control key if you're on Windows. We'll put padding around it. Let's say 20 pixel padding. So it's all the way around, right? I can add another corner radius around that. And now once we have this card, we need to think about how is it going to behave? So when I add text, is the card going to grow or is my text field going to grow, right? Um, how do we change the size of this image? If I increase the size of the image, notice that the container grows. So we need to think whether or not we want the card to uh, grow as the content grows or do we want the content to grow and shrink as that grows? So here, let's create, you know, um, container right? Or the frame, you know, grows, resizes, resizes with content, right? Um, and so what we're going to do here is I'm going to select this text field. We're going to take a look at this text field. This text field right now is a fixed size. And what that means is that as I type in more text, once it goes outside of that range, that little, that little uh, box around it, uh, it doesn't change. So what we want to do is we actually want to set it to auto height. So I'm going to click auto height. And now you'll see that that little text box grows as the text grows. I can also change it to left alignment. So here we're going to make it left alignment. And the one thing that I want to impart on y'all is you need to think about how you want the card to grow or contract. And then you need to ascribe those values. Suggest auto layout will only get you so far, but ultimately it's what you want to do. It's not going to magically understand what you're trying to do off the bat. So here I'm going to set the intention that this card is going to resize with the content and it's going to. And the way that it does so is that it's currently, uh, let's say it's width, is going to be set to hug contents and you'll see immediately that that just grew out of this world in size um but here we're going to set that width to um hug contents i don't know why it's growing like that let's see that should be there we go this just needed a a width 
on it. That didn't have a width aside to it. Here we go. So this card is now set to hug contents on the width as well as hug contents on the height. And when I hover over it, if you take a look at the UI, you'll see little red arrows showing how that works. You'll actually see what the contents are um, in the auto layout. So if you pay attention, you'll actually see how this is working. So when I go here and I hover over hug, you see the little red arrows. When I come over here and I hover over hug, you see the little arrows. It's telling you how it's behaving. Um, and so now as I increase the width or the height, um, sorry, the width or the height of this, you'll see that that now kind of grows. Right. However, it does just require that this text field, you know, that it has a width um, and that it has a height. Now we can do the opposite where um, the uh, content resizes with frame. So we could take that exact same card. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the width to fixed and we're going to set the height to fixed. And then for the children inside, we want them to be responsive to the container. So here, the container is responsive to the children. And here, the children are responsive to the container if we choose fill container. And that's because the container has a fixed width and height. We can tell the children, oh, hey, you're going to grow with the container. And that's going to allow me to say, hey, right, that image is going to just fill as much space as it can. This text is going to fill as much space as it can. And this text too, let's say, because it sets auto height and has more text than we're giving, it's going to overlap. Um, in this case, what we can do is we can select that text um, and tell it to truncate. We can say, hey, we want to truncate the text. If you missed it, when you select that text field, you go over to typography, you click on these options, you'll see the truncate text option. And now when the card doesn't have enough space for the text, you'll see it truncated with an ellipse. Right? So there we go. It's truncating with an ellipse. And when you're crafting your auto layout, you're thinking about the resizing. So either the container is set to um, hug or fixed, and its children are set either to fixed or fill contents. Now, the more complex that your container gets, right, they just have that third option of um, either fill a uh, hug or fixed. So fixed sizes, you determine the size. When you select an object, you'll see the dimensions underneath it. Fill container will grow to fill the container. So if I was to have one, two, three objects in here, let's say I have a text field. Boom, I'm gonna make this text field. Uh, let's use rewrite this to add in some text. Uh, give me one paragraph about rectangles. Just gonna throw in some te placeholder text in there. There we go. So let's say I have this text field. I go to typography. I choose truncate text. I select the, uh, the three of these. I select the three of these and I press shift A. Now, um, what I could do is for those children, and I'll show you, this is probably going to be one of the coolest things I'm about to show you. When you select a frame, you want to select all of its children, press enter. Now you can see these three are selected. If I want to select the parent again, I press shift enter. Now the parent is selected. So I press enter, the children are selected, and I can set them all to fill container. So now as I grow the container, right, they're filling to that space. Let's say I want this one on the left to not fill container. I could say, oh, hey, you have a fixed width. You are now just that specific width. And you'll see just the other two grow to fill container. And then I can say, hey, this object right here, I don't want you to fill. I'm going to be, you are going to be fixed. And you'll see that it's just kind of like you're playing peekaboo with the text field. And that text field is just going to fill the available space, right? So that's fill container. So you're either filling the container 
you are either determining your own size or you have hug contents where you are uh, constraining yourself to whatever is, is the contents inside. So just remember either the, the auto layout frame resizes with the content or the content resizes with the frame. Understanding those two concepts are going to allow you to have more control over your auto layout. Um, I know we're running short hey, on time. Nick, it's Alex. I'm going to jump in. So we do have a bunch of questions. I know um, maybe we'll take like three. I would love you to get to this one at the top from Meredith yep. um, asking to clarify the difference between suggest auto layout and auto layout in simple terms. It sounds like there's a group of designers that are feeling a little perplexed out there. Okay. So auto layout only does one row or column. So when I choose like three objects, right? Um, it only does one row or column. So if I press shift A, right? These are a column, right? And that's all it does. Suggest auto layout will take a look at a more complex layout that contains rows and columns. And it's gonna do its best to make nested auto layout objects. Technically, you can use suggest auto layout for everything. However, it may at times produce unexpected results. So let's say you have a more complex layout that is wireframed like this. This won't work with auto layout on its own, right? It's going to be weird. It's trying to just put it into one row or column. Um, however, when I use suggest auto layout, see, do, 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 do. Where is here we go, more layout options, suggest auto layout. What it does, you'll see there's nested auto layout components. So here is one auto layout row, here's one auto layout column, and here's one auto layout row with the intention of creating what it assumes that you want to create. So suggest auto layout will create multiple nested auto layout frames for complex layouts. Auto layout, just adding one will only do a single row or column at a time. Does that support the answer? That is a great answer. Now, Migs, we do have to wrap up. I know folks have a yeah. lot of questions that went unanswered. That said, we do have some upcoming sessions and some opportunities to give us feedback. So in the chat, I just added a feedback form. We'd love to hear what you thought of this workshop today, definitely so we can get better, or if we can dig in on any topics that you're like, oh, Miggy didn't answer my question on this certain topic. We'd love to plan sessions in the future where we blast through those please complete that feedback form. The other thing that we want to invite you to is we have an advanced prototyping techniques in Figma event coming up next month, and we'd love for you to join us. So I just threw that RSVP form in the chat as well. So give us some feedback. Let us know if we're meeting your needs here, and also hope you join us for our next month's session. Y'all are awesome, and we'll see you soon. Migs, back to you. Brilliant. Thank you all so much. Um, if you want, please feel free to follow along on YouTube with the Figma for Education demos. Check out the remainder of this document as well. So what I would recommend is that you dig into min width and height as well as max width and height. So then this way you're going to have the ability to choose and restrict how wide or tall your content goes. And the final thing that we were going to cover, which we already covered a bit of is absolute positioning. So if you're looking to create auto layout elements that um, uh, grow uh, that are going to be independent of the auto layout flow, check out the absolute positioning content as well. So as always, thank you. I know there was a lot to cover today and I know we had some fantastic questions. Really appreciate y'all for joining in today. Please feel free to check out our YouTube. We do have some of this content that answers some of these questions and feel free to reach out on Twitter. I'm at Miggy and uh, Alex, take it away.